Three things to begin. One, it's the second day of autumn and it is so hot. Two, hello bookshelf number three. It's a full frame of bookshelves and I'm so excited. And three, I got this Captain Marvel necklace today and it's so pretty and the movie comes out in a week. Hi, I'm Kat and today I am doing my autumn TBR and summer wrap up. So in summer, I read 11 books, which I'm pretty sure is more than the season before. First up is not so much a book yet, but it is the Tales of the Shadow Market stories. I liked them, but they only really made sense if you knew like the bigger story, but that makes sense because they're like a companion story. And I loved Lily's brother Zachariah slash gem puns. Like, I love Lily. Two was another Cassie Clare, and that was Queen of Air and Darkness. Loved it, five stars as every Shadowhunter book is for me. Wasn't really the ending I expected, but now I'm super pumped for the Wicked Powers when I wasn't before. Next was The Lady's Guide to Petticoats and Piracy by Mackenzie Lee, and I actually audiobooked this one because I did not own the physical copy before, but I won this at YA Day. It was three stars, and I actually started the audiobook before summer, but it took me so long to read it that my loan expired at the library and I had to get back in line to get it again. But I finally finished it and I didn't like it as much as Gentleman's Guide, which I had also audiobooked and liked when I don't usually like audiobooks. So maybe I would like this one more in the physical copy. Next is something I read for the sixth time and that is Vampire Academy by Rochelle Mead. Five stars, obviously. I hadn't read it since July 2014, so I thought it was about time I read it again. And yes, I do write the dates, or the months, that I read the Vampire Academy books in the back of the book. The first two times I read it, I didn't record it though, so those are just dots. And then for Vampire Academy, we have November 2011, September 2012, July 2014, and December 2018. I love it, it's my all-time favourite series. If you haven't read it, what are you doing with your life? In case you don't know, it's about these two girls. One is a Moroi princess, Moroi are the good mortal vampires, and the other is a Don Pierre, which is half vampire, half human. Two years ago they ran away because the princess was in danger. The book picks up when another guardian, your love interest, finds them and brings them back to St. Vladimir's Academy. Yeah, the school isn't actually called Vampire Academy. Then, Frostbite by Rochelle Mead. Book two, five stars, Ovi, and yeah, they go skiing in this one. Next, Shadow Kiss by Rochelle Mead. Book three in the Vampire Academy series. Five stars and shit gets taken up a notch in this one. And then we have The Cruel Prince by Holly Black. Yeah, I bet you thought I was going to say book four in the Vampire Academy series. Four stars, I finally read it after just not buying it for so long even though I knew I was going to like it. And even then I still didn't buy it, I borrowed it from the library. And then just as I finished it, I won a signed copy from Alan and Unwin. I really liked Jude and in typical Holly Black fashion, this was not what I thought it was going to be. And I have a reading vlog coming soon. And then I have Blood Promise by Rochelle Mead. Five stars, we go to Russia, and this is the end of the VA reread for me for now. Book nine was A Curse So Dark and Lonely by Bridget Kemmerer. And look how shiny, it's, it's shiny. Three stars, this is the YA Room's Book of the Month. It's a Beauty and the Beast retelling, and it was a little predictable, but pretty enjoyable. I loved Harper, and I've never read about a main character with cerebral palsy, so that was interesting to see and now I need the sequel. And then was a super exciting one, and that was Deviate by Jay Kristoff. So during YA Day, Jay Kristoff tweeted this. He was telling people to punch him in the arm for a Deviate arc. So for the next two panels, Kate and I keep looking around, looking for the tall guy. And then lunch was called, we turn around. I'm like, Kate, the tall guy is here. We leg it to the back of the room. I walk up to Jay, I'm like, I'm here to punch you in the arm and he gave me a copy of the book. It's also the first ever signed arc of Deviate, so I feel really special. And no, I didn't actually punch him in the arm. He's like really tall. I gave this 3.75 stars. I really enjoyed it. Those X-Men vibes really come through in this one and I really can't tell you much more about it because it's a sequel and it comes out in May or June. I've seen both. But when I did finish the book, I tweeted Jay, and this is what he tweeted back. And the last book I read in summer, I borrowed as an ebook from the library, and that was The Life Changing Magic of Tidying Up by Marie Kondo. I gave it three stars. I put it on hold from the library so long ago when I was watching the show, and I was number 53 in line. Everything I really got from the book, I had already really learned from the TV show, 
So it was okay, it just had a bit more personal stories to it. Okay, now Autumn TBR. Up first is The Wicked King by Holly Black. I also won this one from Alan and Unwin, and it was originally supposed to come with the first book, but they had some trouble getting it from the warehouse, so it was sent much later. I can't wait to read it. This will also be part of the reading vlog, and I just really need to see what Jude's up to now and how annoying Cardin can really be. And then the next one is one that I don't own yet, and that is Four Dead Queens by Astrid Schultz. It's the YA Room's next book of the month. It's fantasy and it's by an Aussie author, so that was all I needed to know. And then I want to read What I Like About Me by Jenna Giel. This is another Aussie author and an anticipated release, and I was going to buy it, but then I was lucky enough to win a signed copy from Pan McMillan. Jenna used to work at BuzzFeed, and I love her Twitter. We have a lot of the same opinions, especially when it comes to True Blood and Vampire Diaries. This is a summery contemporary, so of course it was released as Summer Was Ending. But it's an Aussie rom-com, which I am here for. The arc actually came with a letter from Jenna, and I really loved this part of it. But the summer romances I've consumed have typically been very American, and while those stories definitely have a place in my heart, I really wanted to see a romance set to the backdrop of an Australian summer, where the season means not just ice cream and trips to the beach, but also Christmas celebrations, the sound of cricket, the smell of Aerogard, the taste of hot chips teeming with chicken soaked, and the bittersweet feeling of one year ending and a new one beginning, which that pretty much perfectly describes an Australian summer. And then I want to read We Are Blood and Thunder by Kezia Lupo. I requested this one from the publisher and all I really know is that it's about two girls and it's a fantasy and like one girl's on one side of this wall and another's on the other side and one has magic and one doesn't, and that's just all I need to know. And after that, I want to read King of Scars by Lee Bardugo. I've been on a book buying ban, so I was trying so hard not to buy it, but I bought it. I love Nikolai, so I have to read this. Next is Killing It by Asia McKay. This one I got from Alan and Onwin. I'm pretty sure it came out last year. It's about a woman who is an assassin and a mother, and assassin is one of my buzzwords, so I'm in. Also, one of the blurbs on the front says, Brilliant and funny, Hugh Grant. Like, Hugh Grant, Hugh Grant. And then The Truth About Keeping Secrets by Savannah Brown. This is an ARC copy, which I won at YA Day, but it actually comes out this month, I'm pretty sure. It seems to be a mystery, and you know, the cover has a keyhole. So, I want to read this. And we're back. My camera battery died, so hopefully I'm still in focus. So the last three books I don't have yet because they haven't been released yet. So we have Aurora Rising by Jay Kristoff and Amy Kaufman. I love these guys, and I love their writing. It comes out in May, and... They live in Melbourne, so there'll probably be some sort of launch and I'll get the book there. So Amy probably won't be there because baby. It's a sci-fi and it's about these graduates from a space academy and it's Jay and Amy, so I'm going to read it no matter what it's about. I also remember back in the day before anyone knew much about this series at events, people were always joking about how it was going to be called the Milky Way Cycle. And this is how far we've come. It's almost here. And then is The Red Scrolls of Magic by Cassandra Clare. Goodreads says this one is coming out in April and I honestly keep forgetting that it's going to be released because there's really not much promo about it compared to the like main series books. It's a Magnus and Alex series, so where are all the Save Shadowhunter tweeters screaming about this? And lastly is Again But Better by Christine Riccio. I've been following Christine's writing vlogs since she first started them, and like the rest of her videos from long before that as well. So I gotta read this one. It comes out in May, but I haven't seen anything about an Australian publisher, so I'm probably gonna have to buy it online. So there you go, there is my summer wrap up and my autumn TBR. Comment down below if you have read any of these or if you want to read any of these. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel to see more of my content.